Dr. Tan Lei Hong currently holds the position of senior lecturer at the Faculty of Technology Management and Techno Technopreneurship at University Ka Technical Malaysia Malika Malaysia. She completed her doctoral study at the Faculty of Technology Management and Techno Entrepreneurship at UTM. Her fields of expertise include service marketing, service quality, quality management, technology management, and sustainable management. In addition to her academic pursuits, Dr. Ten has accumulated several years of lecturing experience at various colleges and prestigious universities. Additionally, Dr. Ten has gained extensive industrial experience, particularly in the food manufacturing sector. Her expertise in this domain demonstrated her practical knowledge of the industry and is it is a set challenge. This experience likely allows her to provide valuable insights into her students and enrich her teaching with real world examples. Furthermore, Dr. Tan's involvement in government projects highlights her ability to engage in public sector initiatives. By focusing on these projects, they are likely to gain a comprehensive understanding of government. Government projects highlight her ability to engage in public sector initiatives. By focusing on these projects, they are likely to gain comprehensive understanding of government processes and the challenges and opportunities they present. This experience positions her as well as rounded professional who can contribute not only to the academia, mm -hmm. but also to a broader societal development. Or Dr. Ten, the time is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Are you able to see my slide? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Good morning, so everyone. I'm Tans from University Technical Malaysia Melaka. So welcome all to the ICPM's conference. So today, I want to share with you an important topics regarding about developing a gender responsiveness framework for implementing a woman-friendly city in Malaysia. So as Malala Yousafzai once said, we cannot all succeed when half of us are held back. So this powerful statement actually underlines the importance of creating an environment where all the women actually can thrive alongside with the men. So what does it take to build a city when, where every one woman feels safe, empowered and also valued? So in our city in Malaysia, actually we have made a significant strive towards a gender equality, but there is still much works need to be done. Many of us have actually experienced the challenges that comes with navigating about the urban space as a woman, whether it's finding the safe transportation, equal opportunity at work, or even just having a voice in our community decision-making process. So today, we will explore what makes a city truly woman-friendly. So we will highlight some of the successful initiatives from around the world and also discuss about the practical step we can take to implement this idea in our community. By the end of this section, you will have an experience to, to have some of the concrete strategies to advocate for a safer street, more inclusive policy, and also greater support for the women initiatives in our city. So do you know that the city they are designed with a woman in mind, not only to improve the safety and quality of the woman, but also enhance the well-being and economy prosperity of the entire community. So I challenge each of you to envision our city as a place where every woman feels safe, empowered, and also equal equality. So together, we can make these visions as a reality. So today, I want to talk about some of the pressing issue or some of the problems that actually happens in Malaysia. So we have actually facing some of the challenges in creating a gender responsiveness urban space. So one of the bigger issue women face is about the safety concern. So especially when women they are using the public transportation or working on the streets, due to the sexual harassment, uh, sexual harassment cases that happen 
So you can see from the left hand side. So a recent EPOS survey in 2022, actually they have determined that sexual harassment is one of the issues that happens they are facing by the Malaysian women. With 35% of the respondents actually they are ranking that these are their highest concerns when they are using some of the public transportations or, or they are working on the street. So other major concerns identified by the respondent, for example, the sexualization of the woman and the right in the media with 25% and the sexual violence cases with 75%. So second, another accessibility also is another major concern. Many of the public facility and also the employment opportunity are not well designed with the woman needs in mind. So moreover, women are often underrepresented in the urban planning processes and also their decisions making process, which means that their perspective and also the needs are actually frequently overlooked by the government. There's also a significant communication gap between the experts who advocate for the woman-friendly city. And this has actually leading to a lack of comprehensive policy and also the infrastructure. So finally, there is a disconnect between the academic research and the practice, uh, practice implications in this field. So this means that while we have a plenty of the study, we have plenty of the research on the gender responsiveness urban planning, these insights are not being effectively translated into a real world solution. So addressing this issue actually is required um, a concerted effort to ensure our city are safe accessible and also inclusive for everyone. So to achieve this, we must have actively to involve the woman in the planning process. Invest in the safety measure for the public space and also to create a policy that can prioritize the gender's equality. So by working together, we can build uh, urban environments that can support and also empower all the members of our community. So for my research, actually, I'm looking into a Subang Jaya in Malaysia, which has the distinctions of being the first country woman-friendly city in Malaysia. So this research actually focuses on three objectives. The first one is to develop a gender responsive framework for implementing the woman-friendly city. Second, what are the gender inclusive activity and infrastructure elements that have the potential to enhance the Subang Jaya as a woman friendly city? The third, what are the strategy, strategies can be formulated to effectively promote the awareness and also implementations of the gender inclusive activity and infrastructure elements that aims at enhancing the Subang Jaya as a woman friendly city? So, so these are this slide, ladies and gentlemen. This slide actually showcase some of the newspaper clipping celebrating the Subang Jaya remarkable achievement as the first woman-friendly city in Malaysia. We have actually received a coverage across a diverse range of the medias, this including from the Chinese, English, and Malay newspaper. So right now I proceed to the literature review. According to the United Nations in year 2022, inclusive city is a place where everyone has the power to participate productively and also pro positively in the opportunity the city has to offer regardless of the property, gender, age, race, or the religion. So you can see from the this diagram, one of the key ways of the gender, gender mainstream streaming manifest in the urban planning is through the concept of a woman-friendly city. So this idea actually they have emerged in the 1970s when the women activists in the North America has such to begin to advocating for enhance the safety for the women in their daily life. By 1980s, the conversation actually has been expanded to include how the urban planning could be improved from a gender perspective. So the concept actually has gained the international traction with the European Declaration for the Woman for the Urban Woman in 1994 and the United Nations Habitat Second Urban Woman Life in 1996. 
So this actually marking the first official discussions on the building a gender equality city. So a woman-friendly city focused on the gender mainstreaming, mainstreaming, and actually uh, mainstreaming and also the gender equality. They are recognizing that the women and men actually they have experienced the urban environment differently. So to create a gender sensitive urban planning and also urban space, we need to incorporate the gender awareness and uh, at every of the stages. So you can see from the slide in the in your right hand side, according to the urban development in the Vienna in 2013. So starting from the goal setting and then it's through the planning and implementations to evaluating the effectiveness of this measure. So this holistic approach actually is to ensure that the open space are safe, accessible and also equitable for everyone. And creating a woman-friendly city actually they require a cohesive integration of the international frameworks and also the local policy aims at promoting the gender equality, women's rights, and also sustainable urban development. So the key international frameworks such as the new urban gen new urban agenda and then adopted during the Habitat Tree Conference emphasize that inclusive urban planning and management that prioritize the gender equity and the empowerment of the woman and also the girl. So second, the Sustainable Development Goal, SDG, particularly in the Goal 5 about the gender equality. And Goal 11 is about the sustainable city and community. So this actually has provided a global blueprint for the city to achieve the gender equality and inclusive urbanization. So meanwhile, the conventions on the eliminations of all forms of the discriminations against the women. And then Security Council of the Resolutions and also United Nations, United Nations Security Council Resolution, UNESCO Priority Gender Equality Actions Plan from year 2014 to year 2021, the United Nations Declarations on the Right of the Indigenous People. United Nations Human Rights and the Environments and the Gender Equality in year 2021. So in locally in Malaysia, the policies such as oh, so sorry, uh, are you able to see my slide? Yes, we are at literature review slide. Uh, okay, because I think I mistakenly pressed a button. So actually in locally in Malaysia, we do have some of the policy. For example, the Selangor Woman Policy and also the Subang Jaya Woman Friendly City Action Plan. And then by aligning these all these framework and also the policy, the city can be effectively to address the specific needs of the woman and creating an urban environment that are not only safe, and also inclusive, but also conductive for all the well-being and empowerment of the women and also the girls. So as I mentioned, my research actually, they have, I'm focused in the Subang Jaya. So Subang Jaya is the first woman-friendly city in Malaysia. So Subang Jaya, I, maybe some of you have you heard about the Subang Jaya. So actually Subang Jaya is situated in the district of the Petaling in the state of the Selangor with a land area of 161.8 square kilometer and, and also actually is located just 20 km away from our Kuala Lumpur. So Kuala Lumpur is our capital of Malaysia and Subang Jaya is a well-established city with an urban built-up area of 85 84% uh, that are primarily consist of the residential and also institutional use supported by the commercial and industry activity. So as a result, it's a home to a diverse of the populations. So we can see from the slide that actually in the Subang Jaya, we have a population of 968,930. And this actually contributes to the Petaling Street District employment of over 1.2 million. So this is the slide about land use pattern in the Subang Jaya that actually I have explained just now. And for the next slide actually is regarding about our research methodology. 
So firstly, we have conducted the primary data collections through the expert interview and also the observations. So in terms of the expert interview, we are engaged with the city council members, urban planners, and also various of the experts spe spe uh, specializing in creating the woman-friendly city in Malaysia. And observation, we are closely observed the implementations and the impact of this initiative. And for the, our secondary data collection, we are focused on two key areas. The first one is about the literature review. We are thoroughly reviewed existing literature review to understand about the global and also some of the local best practice. We did some of the benchmark. And for the policy analysis, our policy review included a wide range of the important framework, such as the new urban agenda, sustain, sustainable development goal, and the conventions on the eliminations of all forms of the discriminations against the women and several others. So specifically, we are exam in the United Nations Security Council Resolution, UNESCO Priority Gender Equity Action Plan from year 2014 to 2021. And then the United Nations Declarations on the Right of the Indigenous Peoples and the United Nations Human Rights and the Environment and the Gender Equality in year 2021. And locally, we are actually reviewing some of the Look, uh, our Malaysia's policy, for example, the Selangor Woman Policy and then the Subang Jaya Woman Friendly City Action Plan. So actually, this comprehensive uh, step from the primary data collection and also the secondary data collections to ensure that our actually research was crowded in both expert insight and also with a robust policy framework. So setting a solid foundations for the Subang Jaya success as a Subang, as a woman-friendly city. So actually, these are some of the photos that actually I've taken during our observations through the Subang Jaya two weeks ago. And then you can see that actually they have some of the women designated parking, they have a woman toilet, and then the lactations, swimming food that are specifically for the women, and also some of the gym rooms that are specifically for the women. And then we have a woman parking area, and then we have uh, like the um, parking area for the pregnant women and then you can see that in there are some of the public uh, transportation uh, or public area actually they have installed a lot of the CCTV so these are some of the stakeholder and camp education uh, engagement I mean that the activity uh, community activity that actually involvement with the women. So now I proceed to the discussions. So based on our finding, actually, I'm proud to present that the newly developed models for the woman-friendly city involve targeting a specific group of the women. Actually, it can be categorized into the four men's group. The first is the female municipal elected official. Secondly is the elderly women. The third is the female student in the college and the school. Because in actually in the Subang Jaya, when I when I did my observations, go through around the Subang Jaya area, and then I noticed that actually they have around 36 colleges and also university, including the public university or the private university, public college or the private college. They have 36. And then actually, this actually is very big amount. And then the last one is a woman in the professional's role. So our model actually emphasized so in your right hand side is a woman friendly city models that actually we have developed. And our models actually emphasize in the 12 key themes that significantly influence the woman everyday life. So this team actually are very crucial for creating a truly woman friendly city. And these 12 themes, including like the, for example, the governance and leadership, the safety, housing and life, land rights, economy, security, education, health, transportation, environments and resilience, art, art, media and cultural, infrastructures and services, urban space, and last but not least is the peace and also the security. So by adopting this uh, gender sensitive perspective across this trial team, city can create a and environments that are more inclusive, safe, and also empowering for the woman. 
So this holistic approach ensure that women needs and also women experience are at the forefront and ultimately promoting the inclusivity, safety and empowerment for all the community in the Surang Jaya. So now actually we are looking into each of these team and also its attribute. So first up, I mentioned about the government and also the leadership. So imagine that in a city where all the women and also the girls are empowered at every level, having all having the equal right and also participations in the decision making process. That means that a woman friendly city they are aiming for empowerment. Woman friendly city is pushing for equal rights and also participations in the decision making for women and girls in all the field and also all the level. And also, they are opening up the continuous conversations with the women to truly understand their need and also their perspective. And women are not just a participation, but they are key player in the urban and territorial planning. So in terms of the gender responsiveness budgeting, financial plan will also reflect the needs of the woman, ensuring that all the resources are actually allocated fairly for the woman and also the man. So a civic responsibility. So a woman-friendly city, actually, they are enhancing the woman roles in governance through the better access to the information and also the technology. So for a second, it's about the safety. So on the safety front, we are committed to eradicating all forms of the violence and also sexual harassment against the women and the girls. So ending the harmful practices and designing a transportation infrastructure with their safety in mind. So now we are looking into the third one. So it's about the humans, it's about the housing and also the landline. So what we are advocating for a gender responsiveness housing policy. So this means that actually creating a housing solutions that cater the specifically to the needs of the woman. We are also focused on the gender responsive solution for the land and property line ensuring that women actually they have a secure land tenants. This is about giving a woman the security and stability they need to drive. The fourth is about the economy security. So economy empowerment is also very important and very crucial. We are fighting for the equal pay for the women because women, because this equal pay actually deserves for the equal pay. Uh, equal work and we are also working to improve the livelihood working conditions and the income security for women especially uh, those actually in the informal economy so this include creating a gender sensitive policy to eradicate the poverty and ensuring the equal economy right for all the women and also the girls so now next so the next one is about the education. So uh, education is also a foundation of the empowerment. We are striving to equalize the education access for all, making sure that every of the girls and also women, they actually they has the opportunity to learn and also to grow. So we are also committed to the gender sensitive education facility that provide a safe and also inclusive learning environment. Six is about the health. So health is also another pillar of our, our woman-friendly city models. So we are working towards a healthy and secure environment for all the women and also the girls. So this actually is to aim to eliminate the harmful practices and ensure that everyone actually they have the access to the adequate, inclusive, and also quality of the healthcare services. Additionally, we are focusing on improving the nutrition for the adolescent girls, pregnant women, breastfeeding mothers, and also the older adults women. The seventh is about the transportation. When it comes to getting around, we are all about the gender responsiveness, planning, and investments for sustainable urban mobility. So we are prioritizing the need of the women and girls by improving the road safety, the street safety, and incorporating it into the transportation infrastructure's design. So the eight is about the environment and resilience. So our environment effort actually include the gender responsiveness policy for the urban and resilience and planning. 
We want to empower the women in the climate change planning and management. So this can reduce the gender-based discriminations in air in environmental issue. So women's voice are actually important and vital in decision-making process related to the environment uh, actions or environment activity. So the nine ones actually is about the art and media cultural themes. So cultural and media also play a significant role in shaping the perceptions. So we aim for gender equality in the cultural life and women equal participation. In media, we want to see more women in the leadership and decision-making process role, ensuring that the genders, sensitive reporting, and the safety of the women journalists. The 10 is about the infrastructure and also the services. So a basic infrastructure must be catered to everyone, including the men and also the women. So we are advocating for the gender equality in the sustainable basic infrastructures in Malaysia. This to ensure that the services meet the need of the diverse need of the women. 11 is about the urban space. So safety is uh, safety in our city, no matter in which of the city. So this actually is including the Subang Jaya, is where is a paramount or is very important. We are committed to eliminating the violence and also the sexual harassment cases against the women and girl in all the private and also public space. So we want to ensure that equal access to the safe, inclusive and also equal friendly public space where everyone can feel uh, secure and also the safe. Last but not least is about the peace and also the security. So finally, in terms of the peace and also the security, we emphasize the woman representation in the decision making process for the conflict resolution and also the peace building. We are dedicated to safe guiding the women and also the girls from the genders based violence during the armed conflict and also providing the assistance or providing the aids to those who are actually affected. So actually this including the victim of the violence. So by addressing this comprehensive trial team, or I can say that they are actually in, in my this women friendly cities models. I have 12 team. So we are committed to building a city they are truly inclusive, safe, and also empowering for all the women. So together we can create an urban environment where women not only live but thrive. So by adopting this gender responsiveness perspective across all these 12 teams, city can create a more safety environment that can better to cater to the needs of the woman and also to enhance their experience. So this actually ultimately can increase or to promote the inclusivity, safety, and also empowerment. So as a conclusion, when we are talking about the urban developments, it's very important or essential that we make sure that it responds to the need of everyone. So this including both men and also the women. City should be placed where everyone feels safe, included and also supported. So we need to recognize that the women experience the city differently as compared to the men. So this means that we have to prioritize their needs. The women needs to ensure our urban development is both sustainable and equitable. So it's all about making sure that the women feel just as comfortable as safe as a man in our city. So when we're talking about the Sustainable Development Goal SDG, so actually this SDG actually is to give us a global framework. So the real magic happens at the local level. So our local government policy, actually they have, they have implemented a lot of actions, initiative, and also activity to ensure that this city or the community Actually, they are feeling safe, inclusive, and also equitable. So when we are talking about the promoting the gender equality and also empowering of the woman, it's not just one of the goals. It's very important to integrate it to achieving for all other SDG. So when we uplift the women, we uplift the entire of the community. So by adopting a gender's sensitive perspective across this 12 team, we can actually create an urban environment 
that better caters to our women need and also women experience. So this ultimately promoting an inclusivity, safety and empowerment for all. Okay, that's all for my sharings. Okay, I thank you very much for the AIBM for give me, provide me an opportunity to sharing some of my, a part of my research that I'm going on. So thank you very much.